Hey, welcome to For Education. I'm your host, Philip Kuhnke, and today we're going to continue in our series in linguistics with morphology, which studies how words are constructed from their parts. So let's get started. What is a word? There are two very important notions of word in morphology, a lexeme and a word form. A lexeme is a word with a unique meaning that has to be stored in a mental lexicon. The mental lexicon is the storage in our mind that holds all linguistic elements with a unique meaning. So everything that we cannot derive from something else is stored in the mental lexicon. In this sense, talk, talks, talked and talking are all the same word. They are all part of the same lexeme, but they are not the same word form. A word form is a sequence of sounds or letters that are formed from one and the same lexeme. So for example, the lexeme talk would include the word forms talk, talks, talked, talking. A second very important notion we have to discuss is parts of speech. So words can be categorized, as you should know from school, in uh, different classes. Uh, their word class, lexical category, syntactic category, or part of speech. So these part of speech classes are then subcategorized into open class and closed class words. Open class words are nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. And they are called open class because it is possible to add new words in these classes. Then there are closed class words, which are all part of speech classes that are not nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. So, for example, prepositions, determiners, pronouns, conjunctions, auxiliaries, and so on. And in these classes, you cannot add new words. And that's why they're called closed class words. How are words created? There are two major ways that are discussed in morphology. Inflection and word formation, also known as derivation in the broad sense. And we will get into both. But first, let's introduce the important idea of a morpheme. So a morpheme is the smallest meaningful linguistic unit. And there are different types of morphemes, namely free morphemes and bound morphemes. Free morphemes can appear alone. They can function as a word. For example, good is a word that you can use in English. Bound morphemes, on the other hand, have to appear together with some free morpheme. And these are called affixes. In English, you typically have prefixes and suffixes. And bound morphemes are subcategorized into inflectional morphemes and derivational morphemes. Inflection morphemes are those that express a certain grammatical category. For example, the ed in English forms the past tense of verbs. Derivational morphemes are ones that change the meaning and or the part of speech of a word. For example, ness turns adjectives into nouns. Good becomes goodness. And here are a few examples of words split into free and bound morphemes. Action, for example, consists of act, the free morpheme, and yun, the bound morpheme. Unchanged consists of bound morpheme un. Change is the free morpheme, and ed is the bound morpheme. Rainbow consists of two free morphemes, rain and bow, and untrustworthy consists of the bound morpheme un, the free morphemes trust and worth, and the bound morpheme e. Three other very important notions in morphology are root, base, and stem. The root is the minimal free morpheme. It cannot be further subdivided into smaller morphemes. So, for example, happy in unhappy would be a root because we cannot divide happy into more uh, morphemes that actually have a meaning. A base is a word to which a morpheme is added in inflection or derivation. And this can be complex. So for example, unhappy is the base of unhappiness. A root can always function as a base. And then we have stems. Stems are the basis of inflective forms only. So reproduce in reproduced, for example, would be the stem. It is also a base. So this means that every root can be a base. Every stem is a base, but not every base is a root or a stem. Now let's get to inflection. Inflection describes the process of adding an inflectional morpheme. So as I said, a bound morpheme, an affix, 
to a stem. And this is done to express some grammatical category. So, for example, tense, number, person, gender, and so on, depending on the language. And inflection does not change the part of speech. So what we end up with is a new word form from the same lexeme. So here's one example. We have the lexeme talk. Its stem in English is talk. Uh, and we want the grammatical category to be the second person singular past. And we look into our dictionary and see that the inflection morpheme for that is ed. And then we just add ed to the stem talk and we end up with talked. Elomorphs are variants of a particular morpheme that differ in their pronunciation. They are semantically identical. So, for example, in English, the English past tense morpheme ed is realized by three elomorphs. The ut or it, depending on your dialect, occurs when the verb stem ends with a t or a d. So, for example, hunted, banded. The t occurs when the verb stem ends with a voiceless phoneme other than t. So, for example, uh, sh as in fished. And then we have the d, which occurs when the verb stem ends with a voiced phoneme other than d. So, for example, the z, as in buzz, gives us buzzed. Suppletion and blocking. Suppletion is when we replace a regular form by some irregular form. So, there's partial suppletion, which changes only part of the word form. For example, uh, to ring, the past tense would be rang. You can see that a lot of ring is still in there. Uh, so, it's only partial suppletion. But it's not the regular ed, so it's not ringed. And then we have full suppletion, which changes the entire word form. For example, in to be, I am. In am, we don't see anything of be anymore. And blocking, then, is the idea that the irregular form in the mental lexicon blocks the regular form. The irregular form cannot be derived, so it's stored separately in the mental lexicon from our stem. As the irregular form already exists in a mental lexicon, it blocks the application of the regular rule that would normally apply and give us the form that we want. So here are a few examples of regular forms or partial and full suppletion. So the plural of man is men. This is not the regular form, which would be man's. Uh, so it's partial suppletion. We still have some of man in there. The plural of cat is cats. This is regular. We just apply the S. The past form of go is went, which is a case of full suppletion. We don't see anything of go in there anymore. The past tense of take is took, which is partial suppletion. The plural of number is numbers. This is regular. The past tense of drive is drove, partial suppletion. And finally, we have the past tense of wait, which is waited. The normal regular form. Okay, so that's it for today. Click on this link to get to part two of morphology dealing with word formation. I'm Phil from 4Education and I will see you next time.